Good morning. morning. Get some things organized here. Well, it's a beautiful morning here. We're we're still green Christmas, but uh, down in Union City, they got an inch of snow last night, so uh, they can keep it down there. We we like it green up here. Um, (laughs) Doug. I think we have a happy birthday this week. <clears throat> on, on Thursday, Priscilla. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Priscilla. <laughs> happy birthday to We got to think up a crazy hat or something to wear, you know, like they used to do at the restaurants, remember? You know, we could we could think of something, couldn't we, that we could do? (laughs) No, okay. (laughs) Yeah. If you would, uh, wave hello to the folks at home. Good morning. It's good to see you. It's glad to have you with us. Thank you very much for being here. And um, this is our third week of Advent. And we're glad to see uh, Liam and Jody. Good to see them in the back. Glad to hear. And also, uh, Zach's friend Adam is here today. Adam Bryan, Sergeant Adam Bryan. This is one of the, one of the people we've been... Uh, praying for all this time, him and his brother, and so Adam was good to come in today, and he is, he's stationed in Tampa, Florida, so uh, he's getting his dose of winter before he goes back, so, so good to have you here, Adam. Today, we light the third candle of the Advent wreath. Our readers are Alexis Burkhart and Zach Bruno. This is the candle of joy. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. Rejoice, for our Lord is coming into the darkness of oppression's exile to lead us home, as we hear in Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf and stop. And the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speech will sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and the streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground waters a spring. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up upon it. They shall not be there, be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. 
They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Let us pray. O Lord, our Redeemer, you led us from languishing in sorrow's shadows into laughter's joy over your abundant restoration. Thank you that you are coming for us to lead us home along your way. Through the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And if you would, please rise for our call to worship. Our card of worship is taken this week from Psalm 71, verses 22 through 23. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you. I whom you have delivered all praise be to Almighty God. Amen. If you would, please remain standing for our hymns. Our first hymn is How Great Our Joy, number 269. And our next hymn is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, number 271.
Please be seated. There is two readings today. Uh, for some reason, I could not get that slide to hold where those readings were. So sorry the second one isn't on there. Uh, I don't know why that was. But anyway, um, I want to welcome you here this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the mercy, peace, and love of Jesus Christ be multiplied to you as we come together and worship to Almighty God. Also, uh, a couple things. Uh, there is still the sign-up sheet on the back, on the piano that has to do with the cookies that we will be uh, bringing in next Sunday. Again, you can, you can buy them. You can make them. Uh, it can be cookies. It could be bread. Uh, it could be anything like that. Uh, and those will be put together next Sunday here at the church, into trays, and then those will be uh, either to, uh, next week on Sunday or Monday, they will be going out to our community services that we have here in the local area, Wesleyville and Lawrence Park and Harbor Creek. So um, if you would, uh, the sign-up sheet is in the back on that. Also, deacons meeting right after uh, worship and... Uh, I think that's all I had for right now. Doug. Diane. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> uh, just a reminder, uh, uh, we're still collecting for the Christmas joy offering, uh, but also in addition, um, we are going to start collecting for uh, toys for SafeNet. Um, in the back of the church, there's a sleigh. Not necessarily uh, toys for Christmas, but if you're un unaware of what SafeNet is, it's, it's for families who are displaced and not, not really families, but <clears throat> a lot of times like domestic, domestic uh, issues where Either the, the husband or the wife or the boyfriend or girlfriend has to leave their home immediately because of, of domestic violence or whatever, and they take the kids with them, and they take nothing. Like, you, you go, you go, you have nothing with you. Um, I have two kids. I can't imagine ever doing that. Hopefully, nobody here has ever been in this situation or has to be in this situation. <clears throat> uh, but um, it provides the kids who are in that situation that moves with their parent um, something in their house. So we are going to collect... Uh, toys for, for a while. Uh, there's a sleigh in the back of the church. Do not wrap them. Um, but it's, it's, it's an awesome, it's very special. I got kids. I know what that's like. So, I mean, we all know what that's like. And we hopefully we're not in that situation, but um, we will collect for a while. Um, I don't know, for up, up to like maybe 10, 10, 15 years old. I, I can't really say, but kids' toys. Kids' toys, something that a kid would like. So, thank you very much. No need to do electronic devices, although that's what they really want. But uh, we, we, you can do, uh, you know, stuffed animals and uh, different toys, anything that you can that you want. Uh, we can do that. Um, and Doug had brought up a good question. Is this for Christmas gifts for the kids? It is not. This is for this is for them whenever in the course of the year. You know, these children are being taken into situations that they had nothing to do with. And um, so when they go into these situations, it's nice if they can have some kind of comfort uh, from some kind of a toy. So, um, again, that's a, it's a great thing. And uh, we hope that you will fill our sleigh. And I'm sure you will. Let us bow our heads now for our prayer of confession. Father in heaven, we thank you for the freedom you have given us through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. But we confess today that we often live like slaves. Instead of living like you delight in us, we avoid you in shame and guilt. Instead of receiving your favor as a gift, we try to earn it with our efforts. Instead of accepting your freedom, we prefer our chains. 
Instead of pursuing your purposes, we cling to our short-sighted agendas. Now, if you would, please take this time for silent prayer. Amen. Forgive us, O Lord. Embrace us, cleanse us, heal us, and make our joy complete. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you would say with me our assurance of pardon. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the beginning was a song. The song was God's joy and God was joy. Sung beautifully to a world surrounded in silence here now. That joy has come again. On a silent night, a sun is given. And I picture God laughing at the irony as he orchestrates the symphony that history's been waiting to sing along to. Joy has come. It sounds like angels sweeping throughout the city, whispering God's wonder to the world, but the wait is finally over. Joy has come. It sounds like the laughter of a child who was born to parents who had long been barren as it echoes back to the story of a God who always gives life no matter the limitation. We try to figure it out ourselves. We seized autonomy from God, trying to define good and evil in a fallen world, felt like trying to play a perfect song on broken instruments. We all forgot our part and the world became more noise than music, more weeping than laughing, more ashes than beauty and sorrow, almost swallowed the story whole. But joy has come. It sounds like the promised one of Israel has come so that all the empty might be filled. Joy has come. It sounds like the pouring out of the fullness of God and the one that is fully man. It sounds like an answer being spoken into the question of a womb, a truth wrapped in mystery, a joy wrapped in song, a God wrapped in flesh for our lives to be wrapped in his. Joy has come. May we join in this cosmic celebration for a child has come to teach our tongues the lyrics of heaven's anthem. May we seek the holy day of the giver, not a holiday for consumers. May we not place our joy in what we can buy, but rather in the one who has come so that we might be purchased. We can find a joy that is limitless and infinite and true joy to the world. For the Lord has come, joy has come through this child, this Christ our Lord. Let us sing, let us all prepare to receive the coming of our King, the coming of joy. Let us pray. Jesus, Emmanuel, child of wonder, Lord of life, as our celebration of your coming gets nearer, we give ourselves to you who first gave yourself for us, and we place in your strong and loving hands all we care about and love. Into your hands we place those recuperating in hospitals or confined at home, and all those who care for them. Heal and encourage those who are ill or injured and strengthen our su and support their caregivers. Into your hands we place those who grieve today. Hold them tight in your embrace. Comfort them with the assurance of the resurrection. Give them what they need to go on in peace. Into your hands we place our nation and our world so filled with anxiety, fear, hatred, and confusion. For the hungry, we pray for food. For the homeless, we pray for shelter. For the naked, we pray for clothing. For the lonely, companionship. For the imprisoned, hope. For the addicted, release. For leaders, we ask you to give them wisdom and courage. And for us, we pray for the faith and courage to do what it takes to make a difference. Into your hands, we place ourselves 
We ask you to sustain us in hard times, to give us a heart for others and a love for you. These are our prayers offered with our hands open to you, for you to use, and for you to fill with all good things. Now, let us pray the way your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Acts 20 verse 35 tells us, In all things I have shown you, that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. While we listen to the music of this next hymn, let us think about how we may offer our time, our talents, or any other good gifts that we have received from the Lord to benefit and further God's will for his creation. Your tithes and offerings may be placed in the plate at the back of the sanctuary as you are leaving today.
Thank you, Doug. That was great. Um, you know, th that was a song we, we all know. It's a classic now, but that song was written in 1944 uh, for the movie Saint Meet Me in St. Louis, and Judy Garland sang it for the first time. So uh, it's a it's even more, I think, more special when we think about the fact that World War II was going on when that song was written and uh, has a lot of meaning to it. So. All rise. Praise God from whom all things fall. Today, may you bless our offering. Come, O Lord, and work through these gifts. Extend your love through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And let's pray. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, to accept your word. Release in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading this morning comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verses 8 through 12, which may be found on page 846 of your pew Bible. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. With tongues, they tell lies. Declare them guilty, O God, let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge, let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that you who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Today's New Testament reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 15, which may be found on page 1591 of your Bible. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Diane and Neil. Ebenezer Scrooge couldn't have cared less that it was Christmas time. Christmas was a humbug. Just another holiday for employees to pick their employer's pockets by taking off from work and throwing the work week into a negative account balance. This is what the, the miser Scrooge would say. All this merrymaking and singing around the town. Where do these people work? They probably just sit around all day having fun while us workers pay for them out of our own pockets. Mr. Scrooge was the definition of a curmudgeon with greed thrown in for good measure. He was a miserable old miser and felt that he never had a hand in life, never had a hand up. Yet he worked hard and he had money. Why couldn't others do the same? Lazy, he would say. The whole world's gone off its rocker. Christmas, what a humbug. We all know this classic story from Charles Dickens and how the visitations from three Christmas spirits change old Scrooge for the better. But what really happened? This story isn't particularly a religious one, some would say. More about ghosts and morals than religion, but I would disagree. This story about Ebenezer Scrooge is as Christian as you can get without really coming out and saying it. First, we must remember that Dickens wrote this tale in 1843, when everyone knew that Christian or Christmas was a Christian holiday that celebrated the birth of Jesus Christ. Dickens, being a Christian himself, also knew that the true spirit of being a Christian wasn't always what they portrayed in churches but was evident to anyone who really read the Bible and knew about what Jesus was really like and how he expected his followers to act. This spirit, or to act as Jesus acted, was what Christianity was really supposed to be about every day of the year, but certainly at Christmas. The spirit of helping others less fortunate than yourself by giving to the poor or donating extra clothing and blankets was popular at Christmas. Singing Christmas carols in the streets so that people may feel the spirit of Christmas move through their towns. Remember, there was no radios and television at the time. Gift giving, large feasts, special desserts like figgy pudding holiday drinks, and parties that were practiced by businesses and families alike. But there was always someone who had a stick up there, uh, well, I won't say, but they walked all clinched up, so uptight that they could never have any fun. Always one or two miserable people who are never happy unless everyone is as miserable as they. And even then, they're not happy. This is what Dickens knew about people, even in his era. But being a Christian, he also knew that there was a fix for the problem. But it would need to be fixed in a deep fashion, not just a quick fix on the surface. First, you need to understand that these miserable people have a reason for why they are this way. Maybe they were unloved. Maybe they lost a spouse. Maybe they lost a child. Or maybe they have pain or discomfort that they don't like to talk about in the, in the public. 
Some may have enemies that make their lives miserable. Or maybe they are consumed by only seeing life from one direction, themselves. Unable or unwilling to feel empathy. Whatever their reason, people since the dawn of time have felt these same feelings and have prayed to God for a solution. Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 tells us, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Now, this would be help indeed, but this points to someone and something that God is talking about through the prophet, the Messiah. Again, the prophet tells us more about this Messiah in Isaiah 9, verses 6 through 7. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. He tells us more in Isaiah 7. Verse 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. All of these prophetic visions and messages about God's coming help, then 700 years later, Luke records in his book, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. These and many more scriptures tell the story of the joy that God sent into the world. The joy that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Dickens knew that for a true believer, 
This joy was not the kind that you have when someone gives you money or some other material thing. This is the kind of joy that goes all the way down to your very heart. Let's hear how Jesus describes the joy that God has given us through him to his disciples just before his crucifixion in John 16, verses 17 through 24. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you, you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I am going to the Father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because of her that her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of the joy of her child that is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be made complete. This is the spirit of Christmas that Dickens wrote about in his story. This is the joy that Ebenezer Scrooge finally allows to change his heart and to see life through the eyes of others, as well as his own. This is the joy that melted his cold heart and changed him into a different man, a loving man, a charitable man, a good man. It's never too late to change and find God. Not until you're dead. That is Dickens' hope and help to his readers. And it is our message as Christians. Find the Lord, hear his words, feel his love and the joy that only he can offer. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will sound like this. I've got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got a joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the joy of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the joy of Jesus in my heart. How many of you remember that from day camp, huh? I know you don't have your beanies here, but just remember that song, right? Let the spirit of joy enter your hearts to stay this Christmas and always, for that is why Jesus came. It is the reason for the season. The joy that Christ provides us completes us like nothing else can, and those who receive it will never say humbug again. Thanks be to Almighty God. Amen. If you would please rise for hymn number 270. Joy to the world.
Please be seated. Greetings, prayer for the people. God, our Father, who creates all that is and all that will be, we thank you for always being with us and caring for our needs and well-being. You promise that where two or more gather in your name, you are with us and hear us. Now, Lord, hear our prayer for those close to us. We pray for a joy for Sheila Anderson and Mike Moyak, who recently became engaged. The Askins family, Connie Carey, Sarah Cornelius, Phyllis Sturdivant, the Fuchs family, Lois Garfield, Florence Brower, Brian Bruno, Craig Kinney, Chris Murphy, the Drum family, Eggie Roach, Leslie Ranke, Bob Lemer, Mary Thompson, Beverly Weber, the Wells family, John Banks, Mark Walters, Emily Tuttle, Scott Bain, Corey and Trish Atkinson, Andrew Fisher, Joe Manuela, Fuzzy Pakella, Emily Hess, Joe Cassano, Reverend Rick Cephas, Jeff Tombaugh, Paula Tagg, Betty Ann Johnson, Greg Cars, Al Alster, Sally Daglish, Sam and Roseanne Tramontana, Neil Dirchman, Ray Speakman, Karen Triana, Mala Markov, all those affected by the war in Ukraine, Adam and AJ Bryan, Jake Ropaleski, Toby Charlton, and other members of our armed forces. Almighty God, may we be to others what they need, a body to work when others cannot, a heart to love those who are, who are forgotten, a shoulder to conceal those whose soul is in need, a smile to brighten the most somber of your children, and a mouth to pro proclaim your love. Strengthen and guide our congregation to know your will and be of service to our community. Help us to be a beacon of light, gathering and leading your people to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Now we have up front on the little round table in the middle, there's a church directory. Now you can see we have so many people on our prayer list and uh, a lot of people may not have as merry of a little Christmas as we all might. So um, if you'd like to take a directory and go through it and see if there's anybody that you might like to contact for Christmas and uh, if you can't find an address to check with one of your deacons, I'm sure we could get that for you. Thank you. Today, I charge you to go out in the world, not as a humbug, focusing on all that is wrong with Christmas, but filled with the joy for the savior of this world and that you want to share the world with how we celebrate this great gift that God has given us. Now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace today, this week, and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.